Um, sorry about that, guys. This presentation would be super awesome if we had visuals, but unfortunately that might not be an option today. Um, as he introduced me, my name is Kiana. I'm from Grand Junction, Colorado, and I work from a company called CART. I also just emerged from the bottom of the Grand Canyon after being there for 18 days, so just hang in there with me here, guys. <laughs> um, Okay, so as I said before, I work for a company called CART, and our objective at CART is to provide the most up-to-date data possible um, that's actually ground-verified data for regions with less community attention and involvement. So this means that we're actually traveling to these areas, we're driving these areas, we're adding in as much information as possible um, for the purpose of navigation. Um, this means classifying road networks, um, adding in number of lanes, turn lanes, restrictions, all these really helpful, important things that were actually previously discussed in the Telenav um, presentation and um, in the Lyft presentation as well. Um, Another one really big goal that we have at CART, because we do actually spend so much time on the ground in so many different areas, is to help support um, building this OM OSM standard internationally. Um, to date, CART has conducted projects in more than 65 countries, and we continue to maintain that data after groundwork has been complete um, remotely from our office. We have contributed over 3.5 million edits um, and more than 71,000 kilometers to roads. We've also contributed more than 11.5 million images to Mapillary and 13,500 kilometers of images to OpenStreetCam. And so, as you can tell from all of that data and all of the places that we've been, we've been able to have a very broad spectrum of um, experiences and we've actually been able to impact and become a part of all of these different communities that we've traveled to, um, all these different OSM communities. And so, oh, we might, ha <laughs> Okay, that's awesome. I'm really stoked on that. <laughs> um, Sorry, we got a little lost there, but as you can see, we've been to so many different places, so we have this, um, we've, we have all these different relationships that we've built in these different areas, and we've been able to um, collaborate with editors all around the world and help, under, help us understand what their standards are and also bring our standards to the table. And so, because we've edited in all of these different places, that means we've also built these relationships, and that comes with some growing pains as well. So. Um, I want to start off before we kind of go into the different examples that, um, that our company has had. I want to start off by saying that we have had a huge success and the communities are very pleased with what we're doing there. Um, we have a team of editors who are, who are not only on the ground but ad adding information once we get back to the office too. So that means that our names are showing up all the time. Um, and we have been able to have these really successful relationships. Um, but in some cases, um, there can be some, some issues with communication. And so I'm gonna start off with one of our first examples, which is when we were in Turks and Caicos, and we were conducting groundwork in 2015. And as I said before, this, this whole communication aspect and building community with these places that we're going to is very important to us. But sometimes there's not always an active community. Um, in the country. So we have to kind of deal with that, um, however that may present itself. Um, there were challenges establishing relationships between CART and the local community members because most of, the, uh, most of those members were from afar. We couldn't actually go and meet with them. We couldn't build as much communication as we desire. Um, and because of that, because there was a, a smaller community and not really a local community there present, um, there wasn't much pushback for, for the for the editing that we were doing there. Um, and so CART became the most knowledgeable editors in that country, and we were able to kind of set that standard for the, the information that was being added into OSM for the purpose of navigation. Um, and our attempts to create a local community have not been as successful because those editors are from afar. Um, Moving on, when I first started editing in OSM, I spent hours and hours and hours as editing in Argentina, and I came back to work the next day to only have all of my change sets completely reverted, because, which was very frustrating, um, because a local editor in Argentina believed that something should be done a little bit differently. And so 
leading into this, um, we had some initial difficulties establishing communication in that local community. Um, we did reach out, but we had some problems with that. And the local community was very, very strong. And so they felt very strongly about the work that they were doing and um, kind of had some different standards um, from most communities who are editing in OSM. And the local community kind of had concerns about foreigners editing their data. Now, as we know, OSM is an open source, and we're all welcome to add to it. We all want to contribute, and the purpose of us being in these, in these places is to add the most up-to-date data and accurate data as possible. Um, and the local community in um, Argentina was adhering to some more local conventions and to legislation. So as far as classifying road systems, um, that was one of the biggest things that we actually came across was they were classifying their road systems completely different um, than most areas were, which makes it really hard to work on this international standard. So we had continuous efforts to build this lasting relationship with this already really well-established community. Um, we spent over two months doing groundwork in Argentina, um, sharing our street-level imagery, sharing our data, and um, we actually started to build this relationship and they started to trust us and recognize that the point of us being there was to make the data better, not to attack what they were doing. Um, and so we actually had one of our editors on our team spend a large amount of time um, building this relationship and actually having conferences with this community. And um, it ended up being that they built this really awesome relationship that's still lasting today. And now we have this greater understanding and a willingness to share um, the editing in Argentina and the OSM, Argentina's OSM community and editors outside of Argentina. So we have these local editors who are very proud of their work and they have their own standard and then we have our team of editors who have spent time on the ground and now we're able to actually work together. Um, so one of the biggest projects that we did with them was actually reclassifying the major roads throughout the country. So if you can see Argentina before, this is how they were classifying their major road systems, the, um, the motorways. We know that motorways don't just go like tiny little dots in the middle of a country. We know that they should be connecting these main veins through the country. So on, on this before slide, this was before we had ever touched the data. And then Argentina after, this is after one of our editors was able to establish this really awesome working relationship with this group and actually connect all of these main veins through. Now you can see this is really, really essential for the navigation through Argentina. And a huge accomplishment that we are super proud of and this is all because we were able to build up that relationship and create that lasting working relationship with that already very well established community. Um, just recently our company um, traveled to South Africa um, and we worked in Johannesburg which is a huge city um, and we learned from and we haven't just been to Turks and Caicos and Argentina, we've been to all of these countries. So throughout all of our time in all of these countries, we recognize how important it is to, to tell people what our intention is and to connect with those local editors. And so we really wanted to work in South Africa and make sure that those local editors knew that we were coming and to build that relationship and to build that communication so we could have those same standards and continue to push that data forward in a positive way. So. Um, as you guys know, if you're editing an OSM, there's a country mailing list. And so we, we introduced ourselves in that country mailing list and were able to connect with a lot of editors through that. Um, and then we did a lot more further investigation into the current and the most involved editors in the Johannesburg area. And unfortunately, we found that there was not a lot of editors actually physically located in the Johannesburg area, so we wouldn't be able to meet with them um, in person, but we did have an immediate response from the editors that we did connect with. Um, they might have not been physically located in Johannesburg, but they were working in that area and ensuring that there was good data there. So they just had this willingness to collaborate and develop the standards together and ensure that we were all on the same path. And this was a huge key in pushing us forwards and making sure that we could continue to edit in these areas without a lot of pushback. Um, and I think that 
throughout this, this period of learning and growing with the local communities, we recognize that there is these challenges for both the local and the remote contributors. Um, the local the local groups, they, they always have a different way of doing things. Whenever we go somewhere new, we're always trying to find a way to collaborate with them because maybe they do their naming consistency differently or maybe they're classifying things differently. So we, we are always trying to understand that. I think that's really key in, in making sure that we have this accurate data because if we have these different standards, then we're having data all across the board that doesn't always make sense. So there's a challenge for um, both local and remote contributors to kind of get tunnel vision and only continue on working with with what their standards are and kind of only editing based on those localized standards and expectations. But there's a huge strength um, for both of those also because we have some varied perspectives, um, people who are coming from the outside and, and trying to edit in these areas um, might have a broader view and might be able to create those standards. And that's what we have found. We have been able to contribute to these communities is building this standard and trying to build a standard for OSM internationally and how we edit um, this navigation data. So we're able to standardize these methods on a more global scale. And, oh, sorry, thank you. <laughs> Thought that was a raise of hand. Um, but the real question is, the real question is, is why is communication with the OSM community so important? And, and that's something that we need to remember when we're pushing forward this data because none of this data would be possible if we didn't have these communities adding to it. But we have to create that standard. And so, the, the lingering question and maybe a discussion that we can continue to have is how can we encourage the users to develop more persistent communication and continue to build on these relationships so that we can all work together to push this data forward. Um, we've had, not only do we focus on building our community whenever we travel to edit the data, but also within our own community in Western Colorado. Um, we want to encourage that growth of of people using OSM and adding to this really awesome platform of data. So we're actually teaching, our our company will be teaching a class at the university in, in Colorado, at Colorado Mesa University, um, to help introduce students to open source GIS tools. Um, so whether that's in JASM or QGIS um, or just OSM, we can help rem remind students that life after school continues on and we can continue mapping. We don't have to use those really, really expensive programs and they can continue to help contribute to the, um, to the cause. And we are also going to start geocaching events that help, um, that help OSM by creating more opportunities for people to be engaged and to help map in, the, in our area. So maybe that means, um, I mean, with our map time Western Slope events, maybe that means getting people out on bikes and mapping the biking trails or getting people walking downtown and um, helping those businesses, those local businesses get on the map, whether that means their business hours or their local cuisine or whatever that might be. Um, we also have a group in the Philippines um, that has been established there and has done a really awesome job demonstrating what it means to, to build a community. Um, there is a local group of ma mappers that they're focusing on growing that community by service learning um, with the Polytechnic University in the, in the Philippines. And they are able to train and provide support for 50 student volunteers. And then these student volunteers have the opportunity for practical learning by helping to contribute to disaster response tasks, um, which has been really cool to see. And then um, beyond just building that local community, there's been an intra-regional dialogue among OSM contributors in Asia that help um, to promote and share the best practices that this group is doing and to help improve technical mapping techniques as well. So ultimately we've learned that, I mean, we've been, we've been so many places and we've engaged with so many different communities and ultimately we've learned that a permanent residence of CART mappers can help facilitate these local edits and it can be very advantageous um, to build kind of more of that standard. And so, but an inability, an inability to reach the local editors before our travel can often have pushback. Um, so that's why we really are encouraging that not only for us, but for everybody to help us continue to move and push OSM's data forward and to help it grow. We have to communicate with each other and we have to work together. Um, 
and encourage that communication between all of our editors so that we can have that standard. Um, our OSM community can be very fragile and we recognize that in our examples like Argentina where there was that pushback. And we want to encourage and embrace strong working groups so that we can continue to work together to, to raise our standards. Um, so our goal is to establish those effective and lasting relationships with the members of OSM community and not only our, not only our company but all of the editors and to build more community and create more reliable data in OSM and to establish those standards for communication and for mapping while promoting um, editors both local and remote. Um, and any questions? Yes. Uh, what would you say is the most challenging data for you to collect, especially remotely? Um, well, most of the data that our team is actually collecting and working with, we are going to those places. So the, the remote editing happens on more of the maintenance end of the data. Um, but I would say that one of the things, like one of our biggest goals when we're traveling to these areas is to make sure that the classifications of the road systems are in line with the standards that we have. And we're also gaining, we're, all, we're driving these areas also to have um, more, more like, more complete data of the names of the roads. So I'd say like finding the names of all of the roads has definitely been a huge challenge for us and that's like our, one of our biggest focuses. I can't tell you that. <laughs> and I also don't know. <laughs> so. <laughs> yes? Um, also, how do you, question? how do you deal with election season was the question. He said that sometimes um, movement forward starts to slow down or there's a lack of maybe participation or data to be able to move forward. Um, I can't say that our company or my experiences have directly dealt with that. Um, I will say in regards to kind of dealing or getting more data from municipalities or from different areas. Um, we're always trying to connect with those different places. It's just a matter of um, whether or not they can actually share that data with us. But we, we have actually been able to get some data from the municipality in, jo in Johannesburg to help add to, um, to OSM. Back there. So the question was, um, how do we, sometimes the government might not always have the same information as us, is that correct? And how, how do we work around that to help create more clarity between um, maybe it's classifications for a road system? Um, so the best relationship that I've seen and the best collaboration that I've seen with that was actually in Johannesburg when we were able to... Um, maybe it wasn't necessarily for classifications, but a lot of areas in Johannesburg didn't have named road systems. So we were actually able to go in, um, whether or not they choose to use that OSM data um, is up to them, but we were able to speak with um, their, mu their municipality and they were very excited about OSM and the, the ability to use this data. So um, it's kind of, I don't know if that really answers your question, but. <laughs> Um, I personally haven't seen that challenge, but they are very excited about um, OSM and the data that we're contributing because they're so used to dealing, dealing with so many different steps and now they can finally see it all kind of put together in one platform. All right, thank you guys. <laughs>